Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm from Wikibon.org, and this is SiliconAngle.com's continuous coverage of Sapphire Now. We're here in Orlando, and we're doing wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the event. Uh, we heard uh, Jim Hageman Schnabe this morning uh, with a big keynote. Uh, we heard uh, McDermott yesterday. Uh, very good messaging, very upscale, elegant. You know, SAP Sapphire is, is quite an event. Uh, we're here with uh, two executives from EMC. Uh, Sylvie Otten Solid, uh, who is uh, heavily involved in the, EMC, uh, in the uh, EMC and SAP activities, and Andy Citizen, uh, who knows every customer on the planet, I think, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, also very much involved in, uh, in the SAP and application you know, ecosystem. So, folks, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. So I was saying, you know, this event is a very upscale. You know, everybody's in suits, and, and it's really quite elegant. Um, we're going to be at EMC World next week, and uh, of course we do VM World every year. They're real technology shows. You know, I, I wouldn't define them as elegant. They're great shows, but you know, this is a lot of suits, yeah. a lot of talk about wallets, right? Um, sure. what, what's you know your what, vibe here at the show? You know what's great is, I don't know if they did some magic in shrinking it, but it is really tight walking through the floor here. There's there's people everywhere, right? You, you, there's no chairs to sit in. There's very very few spots to stand even. It's very yeah. Packed. The keynotes are, are yeah. packed. You know, and uh, it's quite impressive. I think that, uh, you know, SAP, you think of, so if you think of SAP as complex, slow, expensive, but that's not what we're hearing now. We're hearing cloud, mobile, speed, personalization. Yeah, more, more and more customers are at requiring, um, you know, these applications to ensure that they remain agile, that they remain flexible, that they, their infrastructures are agile and, and flexible and, and that they can gain efficiencies. I mean, in a world where, uh, you know, we're all, Looking at our pockets to make sure that they're that they're full, <laughs> um, and you know it's it's very important to ensure that we do have an agile, flexible, and efficient infrastructure for them to be able to rely on. Yeah, you know, EMC got it all started with the whole cloud meets big data messaging. You know, a couple of years ago, actually, we started to talk about it on the cube. Uh, th I think three EMC worlds ago, and then you know EMC evolved that and. Uh, now everybody's talking about it, right? Last year, if you recall, we really didn't hear much about big data. Not here. And McDermott had mentioned it, you know, ten or fifteen times in his in his discussion yesterday. Now Schnabe not so much today, but he talked about analytics a lot, and that's their big data play. Right. So, Andy, you're starting to see customers make this stuff real, aren't you? We, I hope we have thirty minutes because I'm not going to be able to stop <laughs> in this conversation. Uh, you, we're, we, you're starting to see a message you talked about three years ago. I, you're absolutely right, and, and it has been proven to be true. What you're going to see from us a lot is transformation. There's a lot of transformation coming out, and if you look at what's transforming right now, it's the database, right? If you, it, it's interesting. We all grew up in the '70s and the '80s and '90s with scale up, right? You know, build the big data center, support some of those traditional databases. Now you got scale out. You got MapR, you got GreenPlum, you got you know, MongoDB, all these fully sharded databases, and now we got HANA, and we have a, a new memory database. So. How do our customers make the right architectural decisions when it comes to the database? This is a big expense for them, and as they stage, not only what should they do, how should they do it, what use cases, and when, what's the right timing, that's where we're spending a lot of our time right now, getting not only our game together, but working with our partners. So uh, people are HANA crazy. Um, you heard the executive from McLaren today talk about, we, he said, quote, we are blown away by HANA and the impact it's going to have on our productivity. That's quite a quite a testament. Now, I got to ask you, being it with with EMC, Snabe said, "Imagine a world without uh, traditional disk-based databases. Mm, yeah, right? yeah. Imagine a world where all data is in memory." And now that was sort of a little slight at Oracle, I guess. But as EMC, you got to be looking at that, saying, "Hmm, times are changing, and we either got to brace that change or..." So, what's your response yeah, to I, that? I heard something about the Stone Age in that comment. It yeah. was a great line. Uh, what was that? Let's share that line with our <laughs> audience because we haven't mentioned it today. Uh, it was, uh, you know, the, the Stone Age did not end because we ran out of stones. The disk age won't end because we run out of disk. It's, it's innovation. And, you know, ultimately, I would say it's the decision that matters, right? Ultimately, when you come to analytics, it's the decision, stupid, right? That's really what we all care about. What we're in right now is a period of great technology growth to apply that to analytics. So 
we're, we're testing out new ways of going about that. But ultimately, we want to get back to where it's simple and automatic, just like an iPad, right, or those types of technologies. So if you look at, at the comments around disk, this is, uh, this is a great uh, target to prove out that we're going into new areas. We're going into solid-state disk. We're going into the new software that can do this. But reality is our customers have exponential growth in data. We're talking to a customer that has a 60 petabyte Hadoop instance sitting beside their SAP instance. These things aren't going away. This is going to be here. But it, it's going to look like something different. It's going to be 3,000 times faster, but it's still going to be part of the equation. And, and we still got to back it up. We've got to have VR. We've got to have uh, business continuity. We've got to deal with data mobility. All these things that will continue to be you know, core functionality our customers need. I actually wish we did have a half hour, because I, I mean, I'm going to come back to that, that comment. But Sylvia, I wanted to, before we go there, I want to ask you about this whole concept of solutions, right? You're in a, you're in a marketplace where you know, there's a lot of application focus, right? And people don't really care about the infrastructure. So a lot of these people, infrastructure is irrelevant. I mean, obviously, you live in, it's like a plumbing, a plumbing in your house, right? It's kind of, you don't think about it until it breaks, and then you're like, oh boy, right. there's water going everywhere. So you're in solutions marketing. What does solutions mean to you? What is that, well, maybe it talks about solutions. What, what do you mean by solutions? So, so, I mean, it's a good question. You know, solutions are, are a lot of different things for a lot of different people, I think. But fundamentally, what solutions are is, is really when you take you know, the customer's needs and you package it up into something where it actually is the software, the products, and services all combined into one offering that allows customers to address their needs from you know an overall you know product, software, and services aspect. So if I look at the um, the partnership pie, mm -hmm. um, how much is sort of EMC delivered? You know, content or intellectual property. Uh, and how you know, versus say um, EMC friends of EMC guys like VCE Cisco you know, Intel versus just the ecosystem right and so that's and that's a very very important point is one of the things that EMC is, is really founded on and based on is, is really this, this idea and similar to SAP in fact as well is this idea of choice this idea that you can um, you know have a huge partner ecosystem to in, in order to build better solutions solutions that actually address customers needs in the right way so that you're using leading technology best in class technology in order to provide the best solution for our customers so Andy you talked about um, you mentioned Hadoop before I, said, I think you said a 60 petabyte. did you say petabyte I did yeah says I, I love Hadoop yeah, <laughs> it's just sitting on the side. as a storage person right. it's just fantastic so but the, the, speaking of solutions, it's really hard to you know put, spin up a Hadoop cluster, and you got to have the right you know skill sets, and there's all these new new terminology and Pig and Hive and right. and and and, and, and HBase, and it's like I don't necessarily have all those skill sets, so we're in heavy need of solutions. My question is, do you see a world where those sort of that Hadoop on the side instance comes together with things like in-memory databases and the operational data? What, what's well, your vision there? be a little bit uh, salacious here, uh, or at least uh, early in my conversations, I think the cloud eventually gets us there, right? If you think about, uh, you know, client server we did in the 90s, uh, it, we spread out, right? And we came back together. Uh, Consolidation is always a massive optimization opportunity. It, we, right now we're looking for performance. We break the things apart to get better performance. We look at in memory to get better performance. But ultimately, we're going to still have data centers. We're going to still have costs. You think about the companies that are you know, just a bunch of disks like Google where you've got thousands of people swapping product out because you, know, you don't have production systems. You have this kind of a mismatch of, of technologies. Primarily, our customers are still saying we still want to come up with the best data center strategies, whether we own it, one of our partners own it, you know, if it's over the cloud. So I think what you're going to see is some dem common democracy of the cloud coming back in to bring these technologies back into a consumable model. What do you guys see that cloud as looking like? I mean, it was, I mean you guys put forth the vision of the hybrid cloud um, quite a, some time ago now. It's had to be at least three or four years ago. And you talk to customers about it back then, they're like, mm, it sounds good, but uh, not ready to do it. And we did some surveys back then, and not a lot of people were doing it. That's changing a little bit, isn't it? Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, we have, the cloud is, uh, has always been a business model to me. It's 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 a technology that you could you could uh, uh, make a similarity a comparison to mainframes. It's not technology wise that different. What what's changed here is the alignment of partners and the alignment of that technology to business processes. And so what we're seeing is a maturation of that going forward. We're seeing you know more customers buying by the drip and buying at a service level. 
And the good news is we have the partnerships and the alignment today to offer that in a really attractive way. A lot of customers still want to have that iron on their on their own floor plan. So the good news is it's become less of a technical decision, more of a business decision. Mm -hmm. Hey, S Sylvia, I wanted to switch topics a little bit. We heard today from a couple of guests about uh, inside EMC project, I think it's called Propel, mm -hmm. um, which is a uh, real transformation. Are you able to leverage that in your activities and, you know, Absolutely. Talk about that a little bit. So yeah, so so EMC's IT de department is actually, I mean, we, we do drink our own champagne. So <laughs> <laughs> when we talk about uh, EMC and SAP and VMware coming together in a three-way preferred strategic partnership, I mean, this is what we're, we're doing inside EMC as well. And we are implementing this tr strategy. And in fact, we are 100% virtualized today on all of our SAP test and dev um, environments and we are actually going to be launching in production very, very shortly. So in another couple months or so, we'll be launching, um, in, in, we'll be live in production, fully virtualized. So it's very, very exciting, and it's something that we're seeing already with our test and dev vir fully virtualized savings. Um, you know, operational expenses are being cut. You know, it's, it's, it's just a tremendous amount of um, ROI already. Hey, Dave, I got I to gotta second that comment and say, you know, there's a lot of talk at shows like this. There's no closer to walk the walk than that. This is going to be a showcase, and everybody's going to want to stop and listen. Our competition, our customers, SAP, this is going to be a really great story. Um, it's a lot of hard work it's been getting, that we've been getting done not only for ourselves but for our customers. There's going to be a lot of leverage from what we've done that the market can participate in. Yeah, this is a big deal. You, you don't undertake a... Uh, an initiative like that lightly. I mean, I'm sure it's a big investment, not only in money, and, and but also time. And I understand it goes live July 4th, but poor IT guys get no break. <laughs> yeah. I would not want to be spending my July 4th, you know, deploying a major system, but uh, and then making sure. But uh, you know, hats off to them. You yeah, know. they've been working really, really hard. But I, I do say, have to say that you know I've been to um, you know a lot of these conferences in the last year for SAP, and I've seen. Uh, the EMC IT folks, specifically Bill Reed, who's been extremely helpful, and I see him in action, and it's really, really interesting to see customers who are really reaching out. Um, you know, I've, one of the things that I, I s saw and I read was that over 50% of requests for proposals now from coming out of the SAP Center of Excellence, they're asking for virtualization. That's something that um, a couple years back we would not have seen. And it's it's really really yeah. interesting, and it says a lot about what people are doing, and how and, and really they're looking for advice. They're looking to EMC, the infrastructure leaders in, in storage, to understand how we can virtualize our IT environment. And they're really looking not just for for the answers, but also for the approach, just for the approach in terms of well, what do we do first? What do we do next? And it's uh, fascinating to see that it really is. Um, Amazing to see that you can leverage your own what you're doing yourself to really help uh, the customers around us. And so, well, Andy, I remember I think it was two or three sapphires ago. It must have been two ago yeah. um, when you had a dynamic where the, a lot of the application heads didn't want to virtualize, you know, their SAP. Right. Just give me all the expensive stuff and let me purpose build it and leave me alone. Yeah. And, I'm inferring from your comments, Sylvia, that that's changing. Can you talk about that a little bit? I, I, uh, you know, we came up with a technology, this conversion technology called vBlock, and I've always said the value of the vBlock is it took the, the performance and risk equation off the table. It, it became a, uh, we, we essentially leveraged new technologies that gave, gave us performance to allow us to virtualize all at the same time. So now customers could get that performance improvement from the traditional and, and, and drive a virtualization strategy. Now, so. I call it the virtual tsunami. It's, you know, unfortunately, when we watch the video of Japan and as the water rolled over the farms and the silos, that's what virtualization is doing today. No one's too big for that. You know, we can we can attack it if it's the right. One. It's a business decision, but the technology is not holding us back. Well, so but there was a there seems to have been a tipping point. I mean, the application development heads have a lot of power within organizations, but the business case is so overwhelming that yeah. that's shifted, hasn't it? I mean, you can look at half the cost twice as fast. That's kind of the yeah. model as you go to consolidate. Don't don't go get call the lawyers on me, but that's yeah. that, that's the generally what we see, right? It's it's, it's a real compelling event. Yeah, for good, a well, I t guys, I told you this would go fast, but we're out of time, unfortunately. <laughs> and, and I really thank you both for coming on, Sylvie and Andy, for coming on the Cube. Um, 
a longtime Cube guest and, uh, and a great one. And, great and Sylvie, the newbie, nice <laughs> job. Thank you very much. Hey, and congratulations how well you guys have grown over the years. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun and yeah. uh, you know, appreciate all your support. So, we'll uh, see you at EMC World. All right. We'll, we'll be there next <laughs> week. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be right back after this word from our sponsors.